Praise the Lord. You've reached past the Priscilla Hall. Let us go to the throne of God. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we honor you, we glorify you, we exalt you for being holy and righteous and pure and true. We yield to the presence of your Holy Spirit that you will bring forth a word, a message that would heal many who have felt forsaken, who have felt betrayed, who have felt uncertain, Thank you for the gift. Through trials and, and tribulations. Words, but you've given us a message. A word of encouragement to strengthen, to rebuild, to reestablish, and to move through the turmoil, the uncertainty. So that we will know you will never leave nor forsake. You will never betray. You are a God who forgives and one who has all knowledge and understanding. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory and the honor for you. Amen. Amen. We have a holy and righteous God that many times we fail to speak and entrust him with all that he has established place within his very writings. Matthew 6, Jesus starts in the verse nine, teaching the disciples how to pray. The Lord's prayer is what is often thought of, that you were here at many times doing various services and at many times at the grave site, after the committal. But this Lord's Prayer is just to show the necessity of addressing our Father and that we are to submit to him and that it's God's will that we pray for our daily need and that we ask for pardon and to be delivered from temptation. He also talks about how he's the divine deliverer, the sovereignty of him as being God, his power and his glory, and his forgiveness that's enjoined as we seek him to receive such forgiveness as we forgive others who may have fought against us. That his mercy is promised, that his mercy is unsearchable. For if we forgive those there, trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Matthew 6, 14. The Bible speaks about betrayal and various instances and offers guidance on how to deal with it. Many times in life, you may go through feeling that you've been betrayed. You may feel you've been betrayed in a marriage, you may feel you've been betrayed in a dating relationship, or you may feel you've been betrayed in a working relationship. You may feel you've been betrayed in a ministry association or affiliation, or just through friends and associates or family members. Whatever the situation that might make you feel betrayed because of what someone may have said or done or took what you said out of order. God is still in control. Maybe you feel betrayed because someone interviewed you and asked you questions that you didn't want to get involved in because you knew how it would turn out. You will be pulled in the middle of something that you want to have no part in 
because you saw the animosity and strife and contention that was happening. And that's why you left. But whatever the betrayal you might feel could have happened or could happen, there's a word in the Bible that talks about how to handle betrayal. Matthew 18, 21, 22 talks about forgiveness. Jesus tells Peter that he should forgive his brother not seven times, but 70 times seven. This is often seen as a call to unlimited forgiveness, even in cases of betrayal. And Proverbs 22, 3, it talks about avoidance. It says, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. This suggests that sometimes the best way to deal with betrayal is to avoid it altogether by being cautious and wise in our relationship. Overcoming evil with good, we find wisdom from the writings of Romans 12, 19 to 21. It says, dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said of the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. This teaches us to respond to betrayal with kindness and generosity rather than seeking revenge. Psalms 55, 22 tells us to trust in God. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. This encourages us to trust in God during times of betrayal and to believe that he will help us do it. You see, overall, the Bible emphasizes the importance of forgiveness, avoidance, responding with kindness, and trusting in God when dealing with betrayal. Forgiveness, avoidance, responding with kindness and trusting God when dealing with betrayal. Lean not towards your own understanding, but at all times acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Because this is a God that can cover you. This is a God that can sustain you. This is a God that can uphold you. This is a God that can guard your heart and your mind. This is a God that can keep you, keep you, preserve you, keep you in his perfect will, keep you in his loving arm, keep you from becoming bitter, from becoming contentious, from becoming unbecoming in his sight and present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. We can't always prevent some things that happen, but we can control how we deal with what happens. We don't have to allow other people unbecoming actions to have a domino effect on our behavior, nor our personality 
and or ability to overcome. God has made a way through his Holy Spirit that reminds us that vengeance is his and he'll repay. But he's also given us a comforter that gives us the ability to cast all our cares upon him and allow him to sustain us so that we will never be moved from his righteousness. How well did Jesus exemplify all of the importance of forgiveness, avoidance, responding with kindness, and trusting in a holy and righteous God when he dealt with betrayal? God will never admonish his people to do anything he has never done. He will never admonish, encourage, instruct you to do anything he has not given you the power or the knowledge and or ability to know how to do it. It is his comforter that keeps us in his very loving care to remind us daily he is there. How to deal with betrayal. And still be pleasing in the sight of God and still be able to rejoice and gladness before a holy and righteous God because he was there in the midst of the situation to see you through. He was there in the midst to inform you of his holy and righteousness. He was there in the midst to remind you that he's faithful and that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think of according to the power that worketh within us. Trust in him. Cast your cares before him. And always know is given us grace to help in a time of need to assist with whatever we might be going through. But most importantly, he has given us the ability to withstand. For he said, I'll never give you more than what you can bear. The great I am, full of all knowledge and understanding, who is able to do anything but fail. May you always remember, trials and tribulations might come. But never allow trials and tribulations to dictate you. Allow the comforters to exalt you higher than your trials and your tribulations. So who can come up and withstand thee? No, not none. Know that we have a throne that God has made accessible that we can come boldly to and receive help in the time of need. That our labor is never in vain. For he is a God of great wisdom and understanding. May the grace of God, the peace of God, the everlasting arms of God continue to uphold you, encourage you, instruct you, and lead you in paths of righteousness that you will never allow betrayal to destroy you, to deter you, and or to make you doubt 
the righteousness of God, the knowledge of God, the will of God, nor the abilities of God. But what's impossible for humanity is made possible with God. Now unto him who is able to keep you, to keep you from falling for the entrapment of betrayal that could cause bitterness, that could cause strife and contention, to keep you from being entangled in the disappointment, frustration, trials, and tribulations that can keep you from not presenting yourself and offering up your vessel as a living sacrifice unto God, which is our holy and reasonable service. The only wise, eternal, immortal, invisible, king of glory. May he rest and rule upon your life as you continue to seek him, as you continue to yield to him, and as you continue to know that he is the king of glory. the one that shall prosper and all of his ways. The one who was able to do all that he said he would do and that he will never leave nor forsake because of who he is, the righteous one whom we can always honor and glorify every days of our life. It is an honor and a privilege to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you how to deal with betrayal. Because not only do the Bible teach us, the Bible shows us through the very lenses of Jesus Christ of how he walked this work and handled the greatest betrayal that placed him upon the cross, but he could not come back. For the spirit of the Lord gives us more grace that keeps us humble as we continue to submit unto the holy and righteous God and resist the works of flesh and or the devil as we continue to draw nigh to God, not with our lips, but with our hearts, not being double-minded, but fully committed that he is Lord. And because he's Lord, we will not speak evil of one another. But we will give an answer in a godly manner to make known of any situation that we might have a concern with. And we will let God continue to operate and work within our life. The righteousness of who he is. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and do it or not is displeasing in God's sight. But for him that have made a commitment to trust in the holy and righteous God, found themselves to be pleasing in his sight. Let us get ready for prayer. And a reminder that he is able. He sings his three children. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worked within us. Father, you've told us we can't even think everything you can do for us, but we can trust you 
And so in trusting you, we will never give up on the holy and righteous God. But we know that you are able. And so we rest in your provisions. We rest in your promises. We rest in your righteousness. We rest in your holiness. We rest in your pledge. We rest in your comfort. Rejoicing exceedingly. Knowing that you're able to work at all out according to your will and your purpose. We thank you, God, for being who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How many of you know he's able? He's able. He's able to do just what he said he would do. Don't give up on God. Oh, oh, oh. You see, he won't give up on you. For he said, he said, he won't. You have to know that he's there. He's able. Let that permeate in your spirit. He's able. Yes, he is. He's able to birth forgiveness. He's able to allow you to move past disappointment trials and tribulations. He's able. Yes, he is. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He said, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16 11. He's able. He's able. Amen. 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 He's able. He's able. He's able to keep your heart committed unto him, to keep your mind steadfast in him. To keep your works pleasing unto him. To keep your rejoicing in him. And to keep you in bow with the very joy of who he is. Because the peace that he gives does not come from this world. But it comes from a holy and righteous God. He's able. He's a, yes, he is. He's able to do what he said he would do. Amen. Amen. Amen.